at six, a runaway saw blade spins right into a mini mart. The video that shows just how close one man came to catastrophe. I mean, I was thinking maybe it's my time, but I don't think I would have survived even touched by that thing. Plus, why a homegrown seafood chain is closing its final Portland location. And to have a staple like the um, McCormick's closed down, that's, I mean, that's got to be significant for the area. And from sweet to elite, the thrilling win over the Fighting Irish that means the Beavers are still dancing. A very good evening, everyone. We begin at six with new developments involving a four-year-old boy whose body was found Thursday evening outside of Everett, Washington. It turns out the boy's mother was arrested Wednesday in Clark County, the same day he was reported missing and has now been charged for giving a false statement to police. We're going to walk you through the details here. Authorities say four-year-old Ariel Garcia was last seen Wednesday morning in Everett with a family member. Court documents now indicating his mother Janet drove south to Ridgefield on Wednesday. Deputies say they were called to a home where Janet was not wanted and during questioning observed she had blood on her shoes and shirt. Records say Ariel's mother told investigators her son had fallen and hit his head and she had taken him to a friend's house in Seattle. We want to be clear, Janet Garcia has not been charged in her son's death at this point, though ever police confirmed they are investigating it as a homicide. As far as we can tell, she remains in custody. We'll keep you updated right here and at KGW.com as we learn more. To new information tonight, also in Clark County, where a husband who was arrested for allegedly hiring a hitman to kill his wife made a court appearance this afternoon. John Adams joins us live in Vancouver with the very latest. John. Well, David, we know that James Rummel will be charged for allegedly hiring a friend to murder his wife in a plot to pocket life insurance money. Now, Rummel's wife was found shot to death in their home last weekend, and we're learning more information today from a probable cause statement released by Clark County. Okay, is your last name Rummel, R-U-M-M-E-L-L? James Rummel in court for the second time this week after Clark County deputies arrested him on charges of being an accomplice to his wife's murder. According to a probable cause statement, Rummel came home Saturday night to his Brush Prairie home and found his wife Lindy shot to death and her truck stolen. Officials allege Rummel hired his friend Daryl Riley to stage the burglary and kill his wife. According to the court documents, a friend of Riley called police earlier this week to report a tip in the case. Riley told that friend he had been hired by James Rummel to carry out the plot. Rummel was to pay Riley $35,000 in life insurance money. The friend then witnessed Riley in possession of two firearms and watched him set Rummel's stolen F-150 on fire. Riley has been arrested and faces murder charges. James Rummel had previously been arrested on charges of making false statements to authorities. He also has a long criminal history in Oregon and told investigators he had previously spent time in jail for kidnapping. That's where he told officers he met Daryl Riley. Rummel will be charged with accomplice to murder in the first degree and accomplice to burglary in the first degree. Now, Rummel was supposed to be formally arraigned here at the Clark County Courthouse earlier this afternoon. That, however, has been pushed to Monday afternoon. He will be held, though, over the weekend without bail. David. John Adams in Vancouver this evening. Thank you, John. So I was walking into the store here. I put my handle on the door, and uh, I heard a loud bang and yelling over here at the corner. Just as a cloud of smoke pops up, Oh man, wait till you see this again. A Eugene man is lucky to be alive after he was nearly struck by a runaway saw blade. It happened when a construction crew was using a concrete saw Thursday to work on a gas line outside the quick stop market. The four foot blade came loose from the machine and spun across the parking lot just as Shane Remke was entering the store. Oof, moments later, you can see the blade hit the wall right where Remke had just been standing. I mean, obviously it wasn't my time, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's probably the closest I've ever experienced it. Well, Remke says his kids saw the video on social media before he even got home. They were all hugs and cries. Northwest Natural Gas told our news partner KEZI that the contractor at the site is responsible for the mishap. That person's been removed from the project while the company reviews the incident. Just glad everybody is okay. Wow.
All right, taking a look outside on your good Friday, 64 degrees. The rain clouds are long gone. Hello, blue skies and sunshine. Just in time for March Madness and the Easter holiday. Ashley Graham joining us in the Weather Center with a first look at your forecast. Looking pretty good, Ashley, right? I mean, think of all those people visiting for March Madness. They are getting a gorgeous taste of Portland. This is a low view from our reserve golf course. You can just see the sun shining down blue skies. Hardly any clouds much different than the weather that we saw yesterday. Yesterday, everyone getting a taste of this. How gorgeous is this coastline here from our Chinook winds camera? This is Lincoln City. Everyone on the coast, they're almost hitting 60 degrees and the, through this weekend, we're going to continue to see those warm temperatures. My goodness, 59 degrees right now, almost hitting 60. Can't ask for more if you're heading out to the coast this weekend. Well, a great weekend to do it. Here's some of our temperatures right now. 63 degrees in Portland and in Vancouver, 60 degrees in Hillsboro. I think the only ones a little bit colder today are those in central Oregon. So Ben dropped about five degrees, but most of us added about 10 degrees to our temperature. You can see Astoria 58 degrees. And again, like we said, these temperatures are going to stay with us through this Easter weekend. If you have plans outside with family, maybe you're heading out to a church service. You're going to see the sun all the way through to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and those temperatures are going to stay in the mid 60s. Of course, a beautiful Easter weekend if you're outside with the family and then uh, yes, Yes, our rain does return. It always does here in Oregon. We'll talk more about that in your seven day forecast coming up. We don't need to worry about that. We're focused on the weekend. Thank you, Ashley. In your headlines this evening, a hole that opened up on an elevated section of I-5 in North Portland has now been fixed. The bridge joint failed, forcing ODOT to divert southbound traffic over the Fremont Bridge in the middle of the Thursday evening rush. ODOT says drivers started complaining about bumps in the road and concrete started falling into a pivot yard below. We had to get this done quickly. We had to get it done as quickly as we could. Usually these aren't as much of a problem as this one was. This one opened up kind of a hole in the road right there. We had to get out there quick. We had to coordinate off. We had to close the road. We had to get our crews out there as quickly as we could. Yeah, they got it done. ODOT crews poured new concrete. It took a while for it to dry. The interstate reopened just after 11 last night. Legacy Health and Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield have until the end of the weekend to reach an agreement on a new contract. If they do not, it could leave thousands of patients paying more for health care or potentially searching for new doctors. Legacy wants higher insurance payments because of increasing health care costs, but Regents says it is not backing down and says what Legacy wants is unreasonable. Providence Health also asked for payment increases that region said it could not afford, but in January on the deadline day, the two finally came to terms. A traffic alert for anyone crossing the Willamette next week. Next, starting Monday, the Morrison Bridge eastbound off ramp to southeast MLK will be closed during the day. That's to repair damage from this crash this past Tuesday. That closure is expected to start at 9 in the morning and last until 3. County officials say the ramp will need to close on several days next week until those repairs are completed. Starting Monday, you can reserve your summer spot to visit Mount Rainier National Park. Timed entry reservations for Paradise and Sunrise will be required between the hours of 7 and 3. That starts Memorial Day weekend. If you do not have a reservation, some will be released every evening at 7 for visits on the following day. The park says it's all because of an increase in its popularity. And a quick reminder, if you're running studded tires on your vehicle, one, if you're in the valley, you definitely don't need them. You need to switch them out by this Sunday. That is the deadline for both Oregon and Washington. You're encouraged to take them off sooner if you're not planning on driving in the mountains this weekend. After that, you could face a citation along with a 100 plus dollar fine. We are following up this evening on a new overdose response program in downtown Portland that sends a team of two, a paramedic and an EMT instead of firefighters. Now, since it launched 30 days ago, crews say they have responded to 90 overdoses. It's not clear how many of those have been deadly, though Portland Fire tells us nearly half of the 90 were treated on the street instead of the ER. ER. The idea here to free up resources. Here is one man we met today who recently overdosed on fentanyl. Told me oh, it's really strong, Griff. I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. And then smoked big, two big hits of it, and woke up with paramedics around me. We are doing everything we can to meet the people in the street where they are and provide them a pathway out. 
The pilot program is set to end this fall, but Fire and Rescue tells us it's already hoping to extend it. A nonprofit that serves women in vulnerable situations across Washington has just received a multi million dollar grant. The Balmer Group, led by philanthropist Connie Balmer and former Microsoft CEO Steve Balmer, is donating more than $12 million to the YWCA of Washington. It'll be split among 10 locations, including in Clark County, over the next three years. Leaders there say the bulk of the money will go to hire and retain staff who do difficult and important work. We are the people that the community turns to when they're needing help to flee a domestic violence situation and we're also the people that the hospitals turn to when someone um, shows up after a sexual assault um, and is needing support and what the next steps look like for them. The YWCA of Clark County has been around for over a century and serves 12,000 people a year.